Uh, once again, Napoleon, second time. Yeah. How much rearmament of catch-up will the Allies get before war? Yeah, and you don't know that. Again, actions all, all have consequence, you know, like I'm saying, positive or negative. Um, I've come to um, my, my understanding of Chamberlain who has approved improved. No, he wasn't the guy to lead Britain in, in World War II. It was very good for everyone. And one Chamberlain is dying by that time. He died he's he's he has cancer. I don't know if he's diagnosed with cancer before or after Churchill takes over, but he stays in the cabinet, in Churchill's cabinet, but without portfolio, meaning he doesn't he's not in charge of a particular ministry, you know, like like labor or um, agriculture or whatever or foreign. But he's in the cabinet, he's a cabinet minister, he's working very hard they even, but he's dying of cancer, and a few people know it, but only a few people know it. Um, so he, Chamberlain is definitely not the one to lead him through the war, but I do not see him as the appeaser that many, especially once the war gets going and post-war historians have seen him, I see him more as a person that's bought, playing for time. Um, maybe it wasn't the right call, I'm not saying I, I'm sure it was the right call. I think it was, but I do that. Yeah, well, I'm sure he slept, but he didn't just fall asleep. He probably passed out drunk um, because, yeah, pressures, pressures. But he was able to lead his country drunk, so I'm not trying to slam him for that. Fall back. We need to push on these guys here. Oh, they're moving in the mountains. Lovely. Yo, oh, yes, absolutely, P.S. I would agree with you. Hitler wanted a war with Poland. No, Hitler wanted a war with Czechoslovakia. But keeping the French and the British out, he wanted a training war like Mussolini got to have with Ethiopia. He wanted a training war. Um, and so when it comes to Poland, he's super worried about the Soviet Union. So he's, you know, the um, Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact gets set up because he's worried about the Soviet Union and not so much about Western allies because he perceives them as not willing to fight. He he knows it's a gamble. You can definitely, some of the comments that people make, knows that it's a gamble. Well, I left this open, but I didn't think they were going to push so hard there, but we can deal with this, no problem. And so um, he realizes it's going to be a gamble, but he really doesn't think it's going to be a serious gamble, is my estimation of what's happening there. So he, but he wants a war with Poland, but that's why he's trying to justify getting the Danzig Corridor. Okay, we gotta see how to do this best. But um, here, um, okay, the French do you keep pushing on them? You come up this way. You fall back behind the infantry screen here. We're going to use artillery on you if you want to keep pushing. We're going to move these guys via truck up that way. These guys are going to come down over here. These guys are going to come over here and retreat back, but just do some reconnaissance. Let's move this artillery well, at least a little closer. Ah, but before the argument or appeasement was like, there is an imbalance in Europe and we need to fix it to the most powerful country in Europe, our divided power status. 
Um, mm, that's a lot to unpack. I'm not going to go... You're not entirely... like. I'm not saying you're wrong, but yeah, I don't know if it's quite that. Yeah, no one can be for sure as he didn't tell anyone, didn't keep track of us. Yes. They were destroyed her. And Hitler, from the beginning, Hitler put a lot of advice of his commanders then intoxicated by victories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, definitely the sort of the conquerors, you know, more and more and more kind of situation mm -hmm. definitely happens with Hitler. Mm -hmm. Trying to hit these guys where they're in a weak position in the water. And if they're going to attack back out, we'll be at slightly better. Okay, here we go. Back out here. Weaken them back down to two. These guys will come here. They get support from them. Or if I decide one of them. No, not even. Yeah, we'll bring. This way. Reinforce that. Not a whole lot, but now we'll reinforce that. Get a little bit stronger. Now we can take you guys back off, get some air support. The enemy fighters have left the field. So we're going to come over here and let's strafe this unit. Maybe we can take it down by one. Nope. Mm. I'm going to try it again. Probably not going to succeed, but. No. Sometimes you get a little lucky. Two comments. One, Germany was has never been fascist. Italy and Spain were. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But generally, people lumped them together. Hungary and Romania were nationalists. Yes, I would agree with you there, Van Bishop. Communists were, in fact, a bigger threat as they were um, an ingenerous threat. I don't know. I don't know if I'm used to that word. Um, rather than an um, exogenous threat. Okay, I'm not sure about, you know, what is that, internal or versus external? You're using very fancy words there, Van Bishop. Fascist or Nazi, that's nearly the same. I, I would disagree, Eraser K, um, SK, uh, except only the fascist had um, Holocaust scheme. In internal versus external, I'm guessing that. Okay, um, well... Long term, because there were internal threats, because you can look at, you know, Nazism in America, and I'm talking in the 30s, not whatever today or in the 50s or 60s, but real Nazism in America has always been limited to the um, German-American Bund, which was made up of either German nationals or former German nationals, you know, people got U.S. citizenship, or German, you know, um, descendants, basically. There was, no, to my, I have never detected a significant amount of fanboyism, like, you know, Anglo-Americans or um, Irish-Americans or um, Scandinavian-Americans or other sort of people that might have been acceptable to the Nazis. Um, I'm trying to keep it within those group of people um, coming on board of s supporting the Nazis. But much larger in America, much, much larger, was the Silver Legion, um, which was a fascist movement in America. I don't know a whole lot about it, um, but it was a much sig um, more significant threat. Plus, beyond the Silver Legion, you can go to um, one Rockefeller Plaza, in New York City, you know, one um, where, you know, um, thir like 30 Rock or whatever, you go to Rockefeller Plaza, the building, and all over that building, 
If you pay attention and look at that building, that building is an homage to fascism, okay? It was a fascist-inspired artwork all over that building. It's all fascism. Um, and it's still there today, and no one seems to pay attention to it. Um, fasci there were a lot of admirers of fascism, even if they didn't put on a Silver Legion uniform or join anything. Uh, and you can even look at people like um, Roosevelt. Uh, there were a lot of people that had somewhat warm feelings towards fascism. So it's there's a lot more of an internal threat in a lot of these countries than I think we looking back on it compared to communism. Um, communism, because they're allied with the West during World War II, because there's a sustained communist state, because of whatnot, communism is still a real threat to liberal democracies to this day, where fascism, I would argue, or Nazism are no threat to most liberal states today as a, as a party. Um, but we can de that's debatable and things, but whatever. Um, the immediate threat, especially in, in national powers, the big threat at the time was Nazism and their fascist allies. Uh, communism ends up being a bigger threat once they get nuclear weapons, you know, um, because nuclear weapons change everything. Was fascist, but only nearly the same level, same law as Dr. Um It's not a fascist trait, um, but historically correct. Anti-Semitism existed before. Yeah, and there, there's a difference between anti-Semitism and Nazi anti-Semitism, I would say. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. It's a deep discussion. Um, just because... Man, there's a lot, I'm not even going to sort of touch on that. I mean, there's anti-Semitism and then there's Nazi anti-Semitism. And there's different reasons. Nazi's anti-Semitism obviously is worse. Um... But yeah, there's a, there's a whole big difference to it. Well, it's not just the 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 final solution element. There's it's more and deep, and I'm not going to get into it. Um, we're going to um, reinforce you. There's several reasons I'm not getting into it, but um, partially just the venue, partially the time we have. I mean, obviously, you, you know, I'm not saying. Yeah, and, and sort of what, what Hedge 14 says. Um, just because one group of people doesn't like another group of people doesn't mean that it, it goes to um, the idea of, um, you know, final solution status. Um, not saying it's good or acceptable. That, that's, trust me, I'm not saying that, not justifying. They just took off. I just want to kill this. Nope. Um, there's a whole lot of Nazi ideology to try to unpack, and I've been studying it for years, and I can't even give you an entirely definitive answer. If you want to go more deep into it, you can look at a lot of my stuff on my YouTube channel uh, when I play the games. I've talked about it in depth, I mean, for hours at a time. So, like I say, that's why I'm not going to go into it here to rehash or try to do it in sound bites. It, it's a deep topic. It's an important topic. Movements in France and UK were perceived as much a bigger threat to capitalism pre-war, that's true for Europe, not so much for the U.S. 
It's as they knew what will happen to them. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. One thing I've learned in being a, a YouTuber and dealing with people what we're going to do here is just reinforce is mm, a somewhat surprising amount of I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pick my words very carefully here. Let, I want to see what's up here. Okay, not much. This is sort of a hollow force. Okay. Um, how do I put this? With some, with people in, in much of Europe. Well, my ancestors weren't as bad as these other people's ancestors. Kind of thing. Oh, okay. Oh, um, highly redeem my message. There are Slytherin mods. Looks like there is an issue with Slytherin account system right now. MP is not working on. Okay. Um, hello, Pew Pew Mal. Um, is not working on F Fog 2. Right. I don't know that there's anybody here now. It's sort of, um, best to report that on the forums. I would say um, this, at least for most of Slytherin, um, it's a pretty smallish company. Um, most of them are sort of off work now um, by this time of day in Europe. So um, I'm able to log it. Yeah, I understand um, if you can put it on there. Um, yeah, because, you know, guys, uh, I do have a um, no, I'm going to, uh, without even reading, I'm going to, yeah, okay, yeah, um, I'm going to allow, because you're, you're, sometimes you use certain words here on Twitch, um, uh, it gets, um, highlighted, but I know no one here is trying to use bad, um, terms, they're just talking about history. Yeah, guys, sorry, I, I can't really help with that, um, I do have access to a Discord forum, but even there, there's nobody at home right now, um. Don't look like the mods have anything to do with that, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you can you can mention stuff here. I'm not uh, upset at all informing me that things aren't working, but um, yeah, important. You should have never forgotten. But Germany itself, I hate to be judged by it. I'm offended. It, it just offends me on a personal level that now everyone, oh, you did that 80 years ago. Pay up. Yeah. Well. There's a lot to unpack there, too, using sort of a modern term. Um, uh, continuity of government and continuity of responsibility is an interesting thing. Um, you know, obviously... Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a deep, it's a deep situation because you still to this day have the, the same Japanese imperial... I mean, obviously Hirohito is, is passed from World War II, but it's the same Japanese imperial system uh, and governmental system. Yes, the Constitution was rewritten basically by not so much MacArthur, but MacArthur's um, staff for Japan. So, yeah, there's a change. Um, but it's still at heart that, and yeah, obviously the Nazi, Nazi regime is gone and, you know, broken up into basically two governments or three if you count Austria as the third, and now there's a unification of two. So continuity, responsibility, um, there's a, I'm not going to say there's none. I would disagree with the idea that, the, you know, modern, Germans, modern German government, which represents the modern German people, but they're not the people who did the crimes. I'll fully agree with that. They're not the same people who did the crimes. But that doesn't mean there's zero societal responsibility, maybe zero individual 
you know, any one individual is currently alive, unless there's, you know, a World War II veteran who did something way back then, still alive. But um, modern modern day people, individually, you're not responsible. I totally agree with that. But yeah. So yeah, I get where you're going. It just it gets there. Um. So yeah, you know. There's a lot. Well, uh, yeah. There's a lot of anti-Zionism. Oh, and Poland to this day. Oh God, yeah. Um, that that's for sure. You know. Can a nation just declare bankruptcy? I'm sort of on this. You sort of got me onto this a little bit there. Um, and go, hey, yeah, you know the money that we borrowed from you? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, that that was this other guy uh, that I replaced, borrowed from you? That, you know, like, like Germany borrows a lot of money from the U.S. after World War II to pay off the, you know, um, uh, war, you know, the, the reparations for World War I. You know, that the Germans wrote on this. They could have gone back to war and millions more could have died, but they signed on the Versailles Treaty. Yeah, they weren't really negotiating. It was presented to them as either this or back to war. They decided to sign on the treaty and to get the money to pay off the reparations they borrowed from from, Germ from the U.S. Well, you know, do, you know, do, does a change in government or just time erase that debt if it's not paid off um i'm going to know it needs to be paid off if you if you want to be a responsible nation so yeah you know it's you know it just it's it's a tough question Oh, Ellen Devout. So yeah, it's a, it's a tough question. So yeah, okay. Let's continue with this. I think we're good. We've got up to forty turns. Yeah, I know I haven't moved units because most of them are dug in. Hello, Titus. How you doing? Good to have you back. We're moving into the mountains there. We'll keep pursuing them. They're going after my infantry, they're reinforcing. They're coming around to go after my anti-tank gun, it looks like. This guy seems to wander around here, doesn't seem to do much. Thank you for being a subscriber, of course. Ah, P.S. They they didn't um, owe the money in German Reichsmarks. They owed the money in U.S. dollars. So that that's the key. It wasn't that it wasn't a loan that they could pay off with Reichsmarks. So it doesn't matter the inflation level of the Reichsmark. It matters. Okay, you're the weaker one of the two, so we're going to bring you down here. Hit you with the stronger one first. I'm gonna hopefully kill you off with the nope, I'm kill you off. So yeah, um But yeah, it was it wasn't a debt to be paid off in any sort of Reichmarks or Deutschmarks or whatever you want to call a German currency as it changed. Well they yeah, they couldn't buy well they couldn't buy it with Reichmarks. Um the idea was that they needed to say sell an industrial good to the U.S., a radio, a vacuum cleaner, a, a machining tool uh, to the U.S., and earn U.S. dollars, or, I don't know, sell steel to the U.S. to earn U.S. dollars. That is why the, the big um, depression that also affects America happens is because of that whole repayment system collapses. And so in the 1920s, they're called the Roaring Twenties, 
in, the, in America. And part of that for America is the economy is roaring. There is a, a brief depression, but just brief and it's over in like 18 months. It's bad, but it's just 18 months and then it things are great again. But it's the collapse of the debt post-World War I debt repayment system that causes the Great Depression and a lot to go into there on that. So glad I'm able to see some degree answer some of your questions. We really go for the moment Versailles Treaty was signed World War or was signed World War II and even more is like Vietnam seceded. Oh yeah, no, the World War II follows on from the Versailles Treaty. Like I say, everything has its consequences, good or bad. Um, and they're not all gonna be good or all be bad. Um, Well, the same if you if your money is weak it's weak yeah but it's it's a lot of the stuff wasn't being judged in the idea of a german currency well first we're going to attack with you you're weak but you'll weaken them some and now they're cut off and we'll attack with them. Good. And these guys, we will order here. here. And we will engage there. So no losses, and they're what, down to four or something? So they got hammered pretty hard. And hello, Damien, how you doing? And, you know, economies, yeah, are a real factor here. No doubt. Okay, they got that AA gun. So what we're going to do here. Oh, oh. oh. Have I ever told you how much I hate not having an undo button here when I misclick like that? I forget that I'm clicked on an aircraft and I wanted to move, see if I can move this tank over here to go after these guys. Oh. And you fall back and you're gonna... Then you pursue up to there. I don't know the details of all of the loans going on. I know what you're, you're trying, US dollars. Uh, yeah. Um, you pay it. Yeah, I don't quite know all the details of just how, but my understanding is that you can't just print up a bunch of Deutsche Marks or Reich Marks or whatever and call it good. We're going to do you with heavy infantry. You're going to fall back, so we're going to pursue with you here. We're going to fall back to there, and can we? Yes. Doesn't quite cut off their supplies, but it's definitely threatening. I know that he's right up there, but we'll see if he stays. We're going to again, oh, there, um, we'll reinforce. Just now that we're in a slightly weaker position, we'll reinforce here. Here. Oh. Okay, these guys went up here to here, so we'll cut them off and do them an injury. Look, the airbase is open, so we'll move up to here. Maybe some units back in there. 
Well, mentioning that, let's get our reconnaissance flying around again. Now, oh, if you're mentioning debts, um, yes, with the hyperinflation inside Germany, and I have read a little bit about this, inside Germany, when it hits, everybody who has a debt within, the, within Germany pays them off almost instantaneously. Um, there's a couple of different times. So, yeah, if you, you had already had debt, you know, like bought a house or a business or whatever, if you, you, you paid those off. But that's internal. That's, that works different than international loans and debts. Yeah, yeah, PS is, yeah, is basically saying what I'm trying to say. Okay, you move up this way. Well, you're weaker now. So we're going to strike at you. We're going to strike at you. We're going to drive our jeeps up here with our 50 cows mounted on them and do the rat patrol kind of thing and shoot them up. Take a bit of damage, yes. And I know you're weak, but we're going to pound on you hard. And it didn't do any good. But at least we're pushing on you. Um, hmm. Now we're going to try to coordinate our efforts of pushing out of here. A little better. Again, this green shadow around here is Patton's sort of command radius of bonuses. We're going to get ready to move, but not ready to move. Okay, Hedge, thank you for being here. If anybody, again, is new here, um, I'm just going to post my links to my YouTube channel where I do talk about a lot of history like this while playing historical games. And my Twitch channel here that I stream for myself on my week on the weekends. Um, but I'm really happy to be here for Slytherine. So you guys can follow or subscribe. I do appreciate it. Ah, okay, we're pushing here. We're getting ready to push out here. See, I'm trying to coordinate this. I'm trying to, we're pushing here. We got these guys holding back there. They're pushing up this way, but they're not going to, I mean, they might be able to come up and attack my Jeep and take that out, but I think they're fairly weak. Um, we're getting ready to push out here in a good offensive. We'll see about pushing down here. And we're just, we don't need to take anything over here. We just keep these guys busy. We got that cut off. I know these guys are over here. So let's okay, they went back to their air base. Maybe the one I don't know where the Italian or to the German, but we'll up there. Yeah, yeah, it would be bad. But there's always an economic rationale for every conflict. Well, I, okay, I would say not that there isn't an ec economic rationale, but I often say, well, I want to say it's not, in most, in, in a lot of historical cases, it's not the primary reason. Um, but let me finish your, your thing. World War I reputation threw German economy into disarray. Berlin National Social sanctions against Italy for the Ethiopian war push Italy towards Germany. Yes, absolutely. Uh, more than willing to provide coal and steel and so on. Yeah, um... Okay. German-Italian alliance. I don't think it was economical in the... whether in the dollars and cents or even in the um, coal and steel sense. I don't think. I think it was, hey, our allies the British and the, the French, are not going to support our future endeavors. And it's more of a 
the tactical, strategical, geopolitical alliance. And once Mussolini believes, oh, new unit available, not that it's going to help us here, um, but sometime it might, uh, the battleship Iowa. Okay, cool. Um, the big concern with Mussolini wasn't Nazism as an ideology. It was a concern for the Italian Empire, I would say, and concern that to one extent or another, Hitler would want back former Austrian Empire territories. Now, in places like in Trieste, down the Adriatic coast, or places like Tyrol, the Italian Tyrol um, that had been, um, that was still, uh, I believe at the time of World War, at the beginning of World War II, still a majority German speaking territory. He is concerned about that, is my understanding. There is also just geopolitical power plays, you know, empires worrying about other empires if a war breaks out. You know, a big strong super neighbor to the north might not be a good thing, but I think it was what was going on there. So I don't, you know, yes, there was an economic embargo over what Italy was doing in Ethiopia, but I think it was more thought, I, I thought you were our buddies and all we were doing was beating up on these, you know, Africans. They're not like Europeans. They're like like Africans. There wasn't because Mussolini, There's you can see some of the photos, and especially even for like one of the Hitler's big visits, they, they trot out a bunch of very well-dressed, uh, very prestigiously elites from some of their colonial empire, including Ethiopia, but also where Eritrea and Somalia, in their, their national garbs is like, hey, these are our, our people, you know, our colonial peoples and proud of the fact that they were their colonial peoples, not like Hitler would be wanting to subjugate them or Germanify them or these are trash. No, these are our, you know, our protectorate people that weren't, you know, I'm trying to trying to explain it their their view, not my view of what these people are. You know, and yes, there is a racism, but it isn't at least as far as I get for most of what the fascists are doing, it isn't, we hate these brown people or these black people or whatever they would have called them. No, it's, these are lesser people that we are taking care of, sort of like, well, I won't go there right now, but um, so that they're, yeah, they're racist, but they're not like, I hate those ra those people. It's just all oh, these, you know, poor African types. We're trying to lift them up. They're, our, you know, our colonial empire. We're trying to, you know, rebuild the Roman Empire. So, yeah, they're racist. I'm not trying to say they're not, but they're not like, oh, these people we got to, you know, you know, s somehow do harm to them. It, it, I would say generally the opposite. So... You know, and, and so Mussolini is, is doing that. And so he's thinking, when he's taking Ethiopia, he's doing just what the French and the British have been doing last hundred plus years. We're just doing it too in some of the last places you Europe, the rest of the Europeans hadn't conquered. And so Mussolini feels very betrayed by this. Not, at least this is my getting. Now, maybe somebody who reads Italian, because I don't read Italian, so I'm... <laughs> I'm just getting it, you know, from trans translations of posters and looking at things. So I may be getting it wrong, but it's, you know, yes, there is economics to empire, but there's also prestige and um, geopolitical position and other things. But I think he feels more betrayed by what he thought were going to be his fellow European imperialists more than he's feeling that it's needing coal and iron steel from Germany. At least that's my interpretation of what's going on like, well yeah I'm um, yes Titus yes definitely exploiting them but you could say you know Mussolini and his fascist project when he's wanting to push into places like um, Yugoslavian territory he wants to Italianify the people unlike the Nazis he's not worried about at least on the other Europeans. I'm not talking about everywhere in the world. I'm talking about Europe. You know, he isn't worried about the genetic makeup of Albanians. He just wants to teach them all Italian and have them good, become, become good little Italians. It's a different sort of thing. He might want to, in that sense, erase the Italian or the, the um, Albanian peoples and culture only in so much as that they become 
Italians. And so it's it's a different, at least this is, again, my reading of it. And I'm sure I'm wrong at some level, but it's that. And so, yeah, it's, it's exploiting them, but it's, as the, the fascists would say, for the collective good, and they're going to become part, to whatever extent, they're going to become part of that collective good over time. So that is more of the view that I get with this. So that's how I would see German, or the, the growth of the, the you know, German and Italian alliance with them. And I don't discount economics as a factor, but I, I don't see it, not, and, and Van Bishop's right, and he's heard a lot of my talks, I know, that it is, I don't see it as the often, because I don't see economics really as the primary factor of, of, of um, uh, Germany's expansion. Yes, if you listen to good YouTuber TIK talks about stuff and shrinking economic markets and all that stuff that he talks about. Hitler sees, and again, I'm trying to explain Hitler's viewpoints. It's sort of weird, but um, he sees the threat of these other peoples out there. And in the long run, whatever that means, these people might come to dominate the German people. And economics is part of a strength or weakness of a nation, certainly. And having you know access to resources, whether it's food or steel or a rare material or whatever, yes, that's part of it. But he wants Lebensraum and to grow a big, you know, grow a big, huge populace of Germans to last the thousand year right, blah, blah, blah. It isn't money in my pockets kind of economics that makes him want to go and exploit people. It's it's a a nationalistic kind of idea. Uh, you know, it's very highly based in race, more so than like the Italians. Like I'm saying, they want to make these other Europeans just become Italian over time, not overnight, but over time. He wants to expand the you know the Nouveau Roman Empire as you know they would be sort of fashioning it under fascism. So it's it's a very, it's a very and, and it's like gets back to, I think it was Racer SK's earlier. You know, it's whether you're anti-Semitic or anti-whatever um, in some place like um, fascist Italy, it wasn't, in most cases, I'm not saying every case, it wasn't some deep-seated hatred like we see in Nazism for Jews and, and other peoples. It's more of a, uh, a superiority complex over an inferiority complex. Again, that's how I'm understanding the main line. Obviously, there's individuals that, that have, have ideas and whatnot, but um, so that's how I explain it all. Yeah, same, you know, weak African battles, but they lost Somalia and after losing Libya, they have to... Oh yeah, no, Italy had its its victory, shall we say. Not that it was victorious, but obviously. And we will mortar here. And we'll go short. Attack there. And we'll attack you. You know, Italy actually, and I don't I didn't read all of Ben Bishop's list, I know he gave a bunch of stuff. They have a successful little campaign taking out um, British Somaliland. Um, that works out quite well for them. It's not Pyrrhic in the sense it doesn't cost them a lot of casualties or you know, in personnel or equipment, but it's sort of ultimately Pyrrhic in the sense that it really doesn't extend, in my opinion, um, 
you know, the sustainability of uh, the Italian colony down there. Uh, main reason is just it expends things like fuel and munitions that are not readily replaceable. So, um, because unless you can effectively link up, and I don't mean the air bridge that they sort of had flying back and forth, I mean an effective sea or land connection to to Ethiopia and that whole, you know, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, whatever, um, unless you get either, you know, like able to effectively run ships through the Red Sea somehow, or, you know, takes um, you know Egypt and Sudan and get a, a, a land a land connection uh, it, Ethiopia is ultimately doomed um, yeah it's it's just, just no way around it that list is for battles one and 40 there for battles one and 40. The difference between a battle campaign and war absolutely then bishop absolutely well guys i've gone well over my time but i've had a great time hanging out with you um fortunately unlike yog dog who is a friend of mine um i don't have somebody coming after me so i get to prattle on longer and hang out with you i hope it's been entertaining um obviously we've been looking at um world war ii and things around it while playing order of battle i hope all this is good and entertainment for you guys. Um, I'll be back next week. I think it's with uh, Field of Glory Medieval, which I'm sort of glad to get out of World War II sometimes and play other camp other eras. And I know I've already posted my link, so I'm not going to do it again. So, um, but you got them there. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please follow here, or if you want to subscribe, of course, follow here on um, Slytherin. They'll be back tomorrow. I forget who, Richard of York or XTRG or some other great streamers with more great games. So um, see you. You can come back for them and see you all soon again. Thanks, everyone.